My name is Vijaya and I am a GRE instructor. If you are preparing for the GRE or planning to start your preparation, I think this will give you a little bit of guidance on how the GRE preparation has to be uh, channelized. We have a lot of information now from the website from the test uh, takers who have already taken the test and scored well and from uh, the type of original publication from the ETS that the verbal reasoning of the GRE has uh, evolved from a more of a vocabulary based test to more of a reasoning based test. So we see three types of questions um, and uh, we see two subsections of the verbal. Uh, but the one subsection easier than the other. You will find text completion questions wherein you could have one blank, two blanks or three blanks. You get around six questions of this in a subsection of 20 questions. Sentence equivalence is a very interesting question type in that you will get uh, six options for one single blank. You will have to choose two, two options which would fit into the sentence both meaningfully and grammatically. Uh, the usual reading comprehension here in the GRE now you within a 20 question section you will get nine questions but uh, these nine questions are uh, based on two to three passages one or two short passages and a long passage I think this is a standard uh, a subsection of the GRE as it is administered now in uh, preparing uh, for the new GRE we can't say that uh, the vocabulary is completely minimized the vocabulary that is used in the current verbal reasoning test has taken more of a functional uh, shift. That means the way we use language in context, academic, social, in the discussion forums and literary circles, wherever we use functional words, those words are tested in the current test. So we need to now learn words but learn words in context. Most words we know in English take different meanings in different contexts. So you will have to, uh, to look extra into the word meanings in a different context. You must also learn idioms. Now what are idioms? Now look at uh, a couple of examples given here. Call in, call on. You know that these two are different. Why don't you find that out yourself? So when we say call in or call on or he was called upon. There are so many uh, different meanings to these idioms. I think idiom learning is vital to a better verbal competence and that is required for your new test. Reading. I do not think anyone can prepare for an aptitude test of the caliber of let's say GRE or the GMAT without extensive reading. Love the reading. You just can't be doing the reading just you know to get the test in the right context. You need to do read, analyze language. You need to expand your reasoning. You have to expand your the way you look at meanings of different texts, how you draw inferences from them, how you evaluate claims. In addition to the GRE reading material that you can get in textbooks and in the internet, you need to also do some very basic reading of standard uh, articles from newspapers or publications or any uh, academically uh, you know inclined text. Where do these passages come from? The passages are views, reports, news analysis etc. and they are also drawn from journals on environment, culture, arts, politics, economic, science, history etc. So you need to familiarize yourself with all these. Uh, when it comes to uh, preparing for the verbal, it's also important for you to build your language to write the essays of the GRE which is the same as the ones the test takers did before the change in 2011. So how do we prepare for the verbal and the analytical writing together? I think when it comes to language, whether you are answering a verbal reasoning question or responding to an essay topic, I think you need to have a lot of ideas. You have to write and practice. You must write on topics which are prescribed for the GRE. You can get the entire list of topics in, in the ETS website. You can also download all that. Work on those topics, analyze them, brainstorm them along with your friends or your instructors. If you are attending classes 
or with someone who can really guide you into writing the essay. So the language element and the reasoning element are both valid for the verbal section as well as for the essay section. So you need to just start on that. Remember we are talking about how you will prepare and initiate preparation towards the GRE. This is just one thing that you have to initiate quite early. And if you are planning for a three to four months of preparation, this can be one way in which you, you know, introduce yourself to the analytical writing. Uh, skill building and strategy should follow. Now once you have done a lot of reading, built up your vocabulary, learned the idioms, did some reading practice, this is the time for you to grab that good book on the GRE or work on the test in a CD. Whatever you do, you must build you know, skills and strategies to take on to those questions. The text completion, the sentence sequence, etc. In fact, for these two questions, you just can follow one particular strategy. That is, read the entire sentence of the paragraph given to you. Identify the clues. Now, this is very important. You could get grammatical clues. You could get meaning clues. Understand the tone of the statements given there. Are they negative sentence, positive sentence? Does the paragraph begin positively and then go on to a negative shift? And then you must run through the options to see which word or phrase completes the text. So this skill building and strategy building can be done with adequate practice. Here is an example. Why don't you just run through this question? The question says the tone of Mary Webb's letter is guarded and her feelings are always dashed by the vision pride that made Dash plea for sympathy impossible for her. Let's go back to the uh, thing. It says identify clues. Now let me point out to you the clues here are guarded and. Now the meaning clue is guarded and the grammatical clue is and. Guarded and. You must definitely know that we use and to combine parallel or similar ideas. Which means, if the tone is guarded and her feelings are also parallel to guarded. Once we understand the requirement of a parallel word, parallel to guarded, it becomes easy. Now what is guarded, parallel with? Strengthened, controlled, masked. Guarded, that means covered, protected, concealed. I, don't you think masked is the correct answer? Yes, mast is the correct answer. Go to the next one. It says, by the wit and pride that made Dash plea for sympathy impossible for her. The parts of the sentence are always connected. Now look at the first part of the sentence. We just read that the tone is guarded and her feelings are also masked. So naturally, if she has concealed the tone and feelings, you cannot have a direct communication. So the answer is direct. Now here you've seen A is the correct answer for the first blank, D for the second. You must know that DEF is not necessarily matching with ABC. So you can have an answer B and D, A and F or C and D. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is that if you are not initiated into the GRE, uh, even if you marked A as the correct answer, which of course is the correct answer, and you went wrong in the second uh, blank, you are not going to get any points. Okay, so in totality the question has to be answered right. Partial correctness doesn't fetch any answer. So you need to be really comfortable with these questions to ensure that your answers are fully right. Okay, now let's look, look at another example of a text completion. Job failure means being fired from a job, being asked to resign or leaving Dash to protect yourself. Because you had very strong evidence that one of the two was Dash. If you are a failure on the job, what all things can happen? You can be fired, you can be asked to resign, or leaving dash. The clue phrase here is to protect yourself. Here to protect would mean to protect your self-respect. So what do you do to protect your self-respect? You will leave on your own. Alright, so you could narrow down to voluntarily and knowingly. But remember we were talking about contextual use of words. In the context of a job resignation, we use the word voluntarily resigning, isn't it? Voluntary retirement. So the appropriate word for the first blank is voluntarily. Why do you leave voluntarily? Because you had very strong evidence that one of the two was going to happen. Going to happen. Or something that is expected to happen. 
is it operative that is functional, significant or impending? Yes, it is impending. So the answer is A and D again.